All right, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of the Rule 34 Podcast. I'm Jack, joined by... Mr. Solis. So we are here today. How have you been, sir, since the last time we saw each other at Royal Rumble? It seems like just yesterday. Yeah, does it not? I think it was only like two weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah, a shorter build for this one. I've been fine. I mean, you know... I'm fine, if not for just uh, a little shook, that time moves as quickly as it does, because we're almost out of February. Gio brought up the same point on today's episode, and I was like, man, eight days away from it being the end of February. Mm-hmm. Man. But, um, if I remember correctly, sir, because the fans are used to us recording on Tuesday, but today you said, yeah. Uh, Let's do it today. Yeah. Because the good old presidents of these United States, all 40-something of them, they gave us today off. So I thought to connect with you about the exciting event that happened this week, the Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Funny enough, I didn't know that, you know, a lot of schools got President's Day off. And I was going, I was under the assumption, because I was going to ask you today, I was under the assumption that it was one of those, uh, what did they call it? Uh, pupil free days where the teachers oh, still went or we'd in. Oh, we at school and I'd have my staff with me, right? Yeah. Got it. Mm, but those come in March. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, time is really passing by, and as they mentioned on uh, today's pay per view, uh, we are six weeks away from WrestleMania. That's even scarier, <laughs> but. A pleasant reminder that I'm six weeks away from spring break. Mmm. Nice. If only, uh, if only that break happened throughout the duration of the G1, so you could finally, you know, watch all the stuff. Watch them, not fall behind. Has the G1 been announced? Uh, I think the New Japan Cup was announced, but not the G1. Japan yet. Cup is the spring one. G G1 is the summer one. Yeah, and I I honestly want to go back to all the different you know episodes where you and I have made that commitment of like we're gonna watch <laughs> the entirety of the G1 and then we never get through it. Goodness, like from one episode to the next, from like one pay per view in WWE to another, it's just like this one's gonna be different. We're gonna do it, and then now, nope, completely behind. <laughs> But uh, getting right into uh, today's topic, uh, we are covering Elimination Chamber 2023, happening in Montreal, Canada. Mm -hmm. And there's, even though there was only about two weeks of build, the main event has, to some, or to most, a long, almost like, if you want to say, year-long build to it. Certainly does. And I didn't even realize this until I saw the hype package, but Sami Zayn, right after losing to Johnny Knoxville at WrestleMania last year, seeks Roman Reigns' help to reestablish or rebuild his, like, his, rebuild his uh, reputation in the wrestling world. It starts all the way back in April, this saga. Yeah, I didn't know that either. And I was like, man... What an interesting story arc they took. That after losing to a celebrity on the biggest stage of them all at WrestleMania, they went this direction where he was like, it was almost self-aware in a way, where he's like, I'm at the lowest point in terms of booking. Let me, you know, in Roman's eyes, let me hitch on to the top act to try and rebuild my name through association with him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, um... Along with that, the rest of the card, it's more so what you'd expect from a pay-per-view in this sort of section of time. It's helping shape out the rest of the WrestleMania card. It certainly is, and you say it's what you want to expect, but I certainly didn't expect a card this short. It's Royal Rumble short. We've got five matches, I think. Yeah, Two it's of them are Elimination too. Chamber matches. Yeah, it surprised me too. I was like, man. Because I was looking at the card, okay, I know we have the two chamber matches, the Roman match. I'm like, what are matches we got? Because I usually like to go over them with my dad right before to get predictions from him. And I was like, wait sure. a second. 
there's only three non-chamber matches. I was like, man, I, I'm almost, in a sense, happy, if you want to say. Because I remember, uh, well, you and I started covering these right as pandemic hit. Of course. And that was really, from there, that shift where we finally got to this point of shorter pay-per-views. Yes, like, almost as short as Raw pay-per-views. Yeah, and I'm a bit happy with it because it means, you know, it ends off a bit earlier and there's still a little bit more time in the night to do stuff. But uh, I guess let's get right into it, sir, with uh, the first chamber match to start off the night. It's the women's elimination chamber match. We're seeing Asuka, Carmella, Raquel Rodriguez, Nikki Cross, Natalia, and Liv Morgan vie for the number one contendership for the Raw Women's Championship to be fought at WrestleMania. Funny enough, when when they announced the full lineup for this match, I forgot what prompted it, but my dad and I were discussing about... Um, I think we were talking about because Rhea Ripley showed up on SmackDown, there was this whole, like... Uh, I guess like rumor that post mania, all of Judgment Day would be moving over to SmackDown. Uh huh. And then I saw this lineup, and then I looked at my dad, and when I told him, about it, I was like, and I was like, there really is no brand split at this point because people just show up on whatever brand they want. Because we have like three people from SmackDown showing up in this chamber to fight for a chance at the Raw Women's Championship. You know, it's interesting, Jack. I didn't even realize that. Like, I watched the match, Jack, and like. I'm familiar with Natalia, Liv Morgan, and Asuka as SmackDown stars, or did I? Raquel Natalia, Rodriguez. Liv and Raquel. Mm-hmm. Didn't even occur to me during the show that we had a mix of them both. No. And, this. and honestly, I prefer it in a way, because at least it makes it so that there's more challengers on each side, you know? Yeah. We, almost think you should have just one women's division. Yeah. And what's it called? Uh, people were talking about for the longest time how SmackDown's women's division was really suffering. And this sort of helped it out because hopefully, you know, more people can cross over, help out that mm-hmm. division. But uh, we start off the match. Uh, Morgan and Natalia are the ones to start it off. And, uh, Correct. Everyone else is in a chamber... Uh, waiting to be released over uh, set amounts of time. Mm-hmm. Um, what were your thoughts going into the match, sir? Anyone in particular that you thought was the favorite? Oh, just one. I told my dad, who I watched with, the, I watched the show with. I said, "Who are you going for?" And I believe he, he picked Raquel Rodriguez, the one in blue. He called her, <laughs> and I said, "I gotta go with the one." With the war paint, the war clown paint, Asuka. Yeah, I I asked my dad for his prediction, and he was like, who else is it going to be? Who's it going to be, Jack? But, you know, a lot of people had fantasy booked this chamber match in kind of an odd way, if you want to say. Well, uh, I call it weird because throw it back to... 2020 when Shayna Baszler ran through the women's chamber and people kind of complained about how they booked that. Yeah. And now people were wanting them to do the exact same thing with Asuka. Uh And I was like, but I thought it was a bad thing when we did it with Shayna, you know? And like, I obviously wanted Asuka to look strong and all that, but not at the, not at the, how would you say? Like, not at the hindrance of the rest of the women in the chamber. Like, I still wanted the rest of the women to come off as viable and potential winners of this. Yeah. So, like, you know, I hear you, and I just pulled up real quick the 2020 Elimination Chamber, right? And Shayna tore through Liv, Ruby, Riot, Natalia. Isn't that interesting? Natalia's back again. So you have two literal holdovers from that right and oscar and uh, sarah logan so like i wonder are sarah logan oscar and ruby riot 
what's the word? More precious to the uh, WWE audience. You're like they see them as more viable contenders than Raquel, Carmella, uh, Nikki. Then I think the answer is yes. They're like, hey, that was dirty what you did to them ladies with Shayna two year, three years ago. But Oscar going to tear through everybody in here. Yeah. And Corey Graves. <laughs> That I think my dad said something similar because he was like, he was like, man, can can someone just shut up Corey Graves at this point? <laughs> oh man, but you know, um, the booking of the match, the booking of the match is uh still a bit kind of confusing to me. Uh, just cause uh, you know, uh, just sort of the order they did the eliminations in, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, it added a bit of a. A shark factor, because to me, it's like, I thought for certain that uh, certain competitors were going to be uh, within, like, the final three, two, and it didn't turn out that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we see, well, first off, any notable moments from the Chamber match for you, sir? More than a few. How about the first uh, elimination? I think it's Nikki Cross, who pretty much did herself in by diving onto everybody. From the top of the chamber pod. Yeah. Um, what else? Who else? Uh, Carmella running away. That's like just good character work. Running back into the pod. Yeah. That was a good one. And then um, there was Liv hitting that uh, sunset flip off the top of the pod. The sunset flip off the top of the pod. That's... You know this this pod this podcast I listen to has been calling her Sabu, just outright calling her Sabu because she's crazy. Yeah, and that plays into her elimination, which kind of had a lot of people confused and perplexed at the booking of it. If you want to say it's perplexing, but it's also consistent with the perplexing nature of her booking in recent months. <laughs> yeah, so the. Um, First off, Nikki Cross gets eliminated, first off. And then Liv Morgan is second to go out, which was a bit of a surprise to me. But she goes out because Natalia puts her in the sharpshooter. And then Asuka puts on, like, an arm bar of sorts. And they're both locked in simultaneously. And kind of like how you said, we've seen from the past with Liv, instead of choosing to tap, uh, she chooses instead to opt out and pass out. Yeah. And, like... Goodness, she was put in a predicament where she couldn't even tap if she wanted to. Yeah. But we saw her pass out like this to Rhonda? Yeah. Yeah, you know, where it was like, with a smile, with this weird, unexplained smile. Yeah. So, she goes out second, pretty surprising. But then next, we see uh, Natalia go out to Carmella. And that leaves... uh, Oh, yeah, that leaves Carmella, Asuka, and Raquel as our final three. I kind of predicted Raquel would be one of the final two, but I did not see Carmella being a final. Sneak in the way she did? Yeah, but I should have seen it coming, seeing as this sort of consistent story they've been telling up until the chamber between Asuka and Carmella. I, you know, I definitely missed that, but I, again, like... That follow through with the storyline. As soon as Oscar comes out of her cha- uh, her chamber, where does she go? She goes after Carmella like she owes her money. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, she absolutely and the, chased and after the Montreal crowd coming through with the Oscar's gonna kill you chant. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Um, and then um, I forget how Raquel gets eliminated. I know she gets eliminated. Because of uh, Carmella and Asuka, but I forget. about on this? I mean, they both hit her with, like, stereo super kicks and something else, and they both pin her at the same time. <coughs> ah, okay. Yeah, and then we get that like, final they each, hook, they each hook a different leg. I, they, I know they're stereo super kicks. I forget what else they hit her with. A double team move, I think. But they both pin her, both hooking a leg. Yeah. And this, of course, helps... Uh, Stack up more eliminations throughout the chamber for Asuka to make her look dominant, you know? Mm hmm. And then finally, uh, we get a little one on one before Asuka locks in her arm bar and gets the victory. And uh, she gets to face Bianca at Mania. And uh, like someone noted, uh, that like, it, uh, how would you want to put it? I guess it's like the, the trend or just something that they've noticed. 
the amount of confidence they have in Bianca in a way that the fact yeah. that all of her past manias she's been thrown like a you know some really good top of the line opponents in Sasha, Becky, and now Oscar. Interesting. Yeah, that's a that's a long string of heavy hitting WrestleMania matches. Yeah. And I look forward to the match. I know it's going to be good and uh I know they're definitely going to play into the story of uh can she go 3 for 3 at the Mania. I Ooh, Well, at least in, in singles matches. She? Uh I really don't know, but especially because of the I don't know with I don't think so because of Oscar's new character. Uh huh. But what a way to cement Bianca as like your true like top star of the women's division if you have her win, you know, in a convincing matter that doesn't make either competitor look, you know, weak if you want to say which weak in the loss. Yeah. yeah, but makes them look strong, you know, and that's that's something. That has kind of been a theme, you know, even like if people had the assumptions that maybe for whatever reason, Bianca wasn't ready when she went against Sasha or Becky was like, she basically proved throughout that, that, you know, she has what it takes. And so if she were to find a way to beat Asuka, I don't think I'd be too mad at it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I hope Asuka wins. Yeah. I, I definitely think she will, but it's it's going to be a great match. I know that for sure. Mm. Or I'm hoping for a great match because uh, I remember somewhat saying a similar thing when it was Asuka and Rhea at WrestleMania and uh, it didn't really go all too well. Yes, of course. So just hoping for the best. And uh, speaking of, if you want to say, let down matches, quotations, quotations, uh, that is how a lot of people felt about the next match in Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. It was a letdown, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm really confused on how they've done uh, the past, like, trio of matches between these two. You know what's funnier? Like, I don't remember that first one at all, that day one where Bobby Lashley supposedly beat Brock Lesnar. That was at Royal Rumble last year. Royal Rumble? He's the heck out of me. I don't remember that. I'm pretty sure he's beaten them all, but I guess I'm confusing when Brock Lesnar beat him at last year's uh, Crown Jewel or Elimination Chamber. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm putting the two together in my mind. But yes, this is the hat trick, Jack. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, getting right into it, you know, I, I can't even say what were some highlights of the match because if you blinked, it was over. It's true. I mean, nothing surprising. You know, you're definitely uh, smashing that finisher button. Yeah. You know, Lesnar was hitting his F5s. The hurt lock was trying to be applied and all this. And then next thing you know, Lashley's getting the hurt lock in. And since Lesnar can't escape out of nowhere, he hits him with a low blow leading to a disqualification. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I was so confused. I was like... Why aren't they just letting these two, like, go at each other like well, people have wanted? I mean, I think the uh, low blow is an indication that, like, they don't know, you know, they don't know. They don't want either one of them to look weak, just like we were talking about. Yeah. Don't book the match. Yeah. I, I don't know. Their Their whole booking of this has been weird. And it's even weirder now because my dad showed me apparently on a... The SmackDown before, Bray Wyatt apparently called out the winner of this match. Correct. And so it's like, is that the WrestleMania plan? Like, how are we inserting Bray Wyatt into all of this? He, yep, he's, I mean, and so after the match, after the, the DQ finish and the bell, Brock Lesnar continues to destroy Bobby Lashley. The guy who won the match is going to be left for dead that five through the announce table and he gives a couple of f5s for good measure to that referee i think it was chad Patton. yeah yeah one after that was the good. referee I, I thoroughly enjoyed this farce of the match <laughs> and then again the montreal crowd we're gonna keep bringing it up one more time, <laughs> one more time. 
You saw the smile come across Brock Lesnar's face like he's a kid at Christmas. Okay. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, that that the the post match stuff was really entertaining, but I just wish the match you know was given more, uh, you know, substance to it. Yep. Uh, and so now, what does this mean for Bray Wyatt? Is he fighting Bobby Lashley, the loser of the match? Is he fighting Brock Lesnar, the loser of the match? Is he fighting them both? Goodness. He's tag teaming with Uncle Howdy to face both. He needs the whole Firefly Funhouse crew to even begin to think he has a chance with those guys. Oh, man. But we turn to uh, our next match that should have, again, WrestleMania implications, at least between two of the competitors in this match. We have Edge and Beth Phoenix facing off against Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley. Mm Mm-hmm. What were your thoughts going into this match and on the match, sir? I was kind of excited, which is a lot for an edge match, because <laughs> of uh, because of just like what they've done with Judgment Day. You know, a big old turnaround for the Judgment Day. They're coming in as viable threats to the legends, <coughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, you got Rhea, who's a number one contender for the Women's Championship on SmackDown because she called her shot and said she's going to rewrite history by beating Charlotte Flair. <laughs> and you've got, uh, oh, again, Montreal. It don't matter about the four people in the match. They just wanted to tell Dominic Mysterio what they thought about him. <laughs> right? And these are the people getting the most attention, getting them, you know what I mean? Then you got, oh, and I think that the Judgment Day have a shot at waiting, Jack, except then it occurs to me, oh, wait a minute. They're in Canada. <laughs> this isn't going to go well for our buddies in black and purple, Jack. Yep, they're in Canada, so you know Edge. And Beth Phoenix got the old heroes welcome home. Goodness gracious. The grit couple, as they call them. I hate it. I absolutely <laughs> hate it. Because I think I brought this up on a previous episode. The grit couple of like this, you millennials, you think everything should be handed to you. And you're looking at Finn Balor, who wrestled like for a decade in Ireland before he even left the homeland, you know? Yeah. Went a school. <laughs> Carried NXT on its back. <laughs> yeah. What's it called? Uh, I, I totally forgot. That this is on me for forgetting that. Uh, I mentioned the whole WrestleMania implications because in my mind I was like, oh, they might do Edge and Finn one-on-one at WrestleMania. But seeing as they got the win, I don't know how they find a way to do that, if at all. I feel like they might switch directions because as far as we know, the rumor is this is Edge's like last year. And so if you have any matches you want to get out the way that he hasn't had already, it's about time you start getting them done now, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, uh, well, you know, fast forward, Edge and Beth Phoenix get the win. Any notable spots? Just, I love just a whole arena full of people just, Poop it on Dom. <laughs> and you know what happens? He runs away because he's a scaredy cat. And they all sing the na-na-na-na to him. And he comes back. That was one of the spots of the match, Jack, when he comes back. He's like, no, 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 no. You don't get to enjoy my absence. Oh, yeah. Oh. You you also a- forgot uh, Beth Phoenix and Edge hitting your favorite tag team's t- uh, finishing move. The Shatter Machine? The Shatter Machine. <laughs> The the they they just act like a like a neighbor walks over to ask for a cup of sugar. They walk to their neighbor's house and said, "Hey, uh, I can't. Uh, what, what the heck are their names?" Uh, FTR, <laughs> uh, Dax, and Cash. Is it Dax? Yeah, and Cash? Like yeah, it's funny to try to isolate their first names in your head. <laughs> hey, FTR, can we borrow a little cup of Shatter Machine for this Saturday, please and thank you? <laughs> oh man, they hit me pretty well too. Yeah. Uh, other than that, pretty great match. It actually exceeded my expectations, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> I-, I was thoroughly entertained. You know, where do you go from here? That's a good question. Qu- quick, rapid fire, Jack. Uh, <coughs> your uh, edge opponent at WrestleMania, who is it? Oh, man. Um, man, who is even on that roster that he hasn't faced? Uh... I'll go Austin. Oh, wait, no, he's fa- apparently. Did you see he's facing Austin Theory tonight? 
Yeah, Austin Theory held an open challenge, and I guess that's something you can answer before the show starts. So yeah, yeah I didn't see that. Oh man, uh, man, who do I think Edge is gonna face at this point? That because I'm trying to think of like, <clears throat> you know, who are some talents that he hasn't faced before so far on this main roster that could also be a WrestleMania match, you know, because I could certainly throw certain guys he hasn't faced, but what are the the full expectations, you know? Oh, I got you. I got you. I don't know if she'll be back in time because I don't know. Or actually, I don't know if she's injured, but uh, they're going to do Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae versus Beth Phoenix and Edge at WrestleMania. Okay. Another mixed good. tag match, but that'd be good for Johnny. <clears throat> I could see it happening. It's one yeah, way. Yeah, I other. certainly can too. I was also thinking of the next chamber matches <laughs> participants as like you know viable edge opponents. Mm, yeah, uh, he, he's fought Rollins. He's going to fight Austin. It doesn't make any sense for him to be up against. Oh, he fought Priest. Yeah, um, Bronson Reed. That'd be weird. <laughs> be out of nowhere. Yeah. I think the Johnny one makes sense. Johnny. Especially because just... after the Chamber, you know, gave a... Or shined some light on him, you know, after having somewhat of a cold start recently with Johnny Gargano, you know, it could Oh, be certainly, used. yes. could be used to heat him up, you know, and, you know, having a match with Edge could get fans invested in him. Yep. I mean, how much time we have? Uh, 18 minutes, and we have two matches remaining. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get through it. We got the men's elimination chamber match for the United States Championship. Austin Theory defending against Bronson Reed, Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Seth Rollins, and Montez Ford. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you you this, sir. Going into the match, did you think a title change was happening? Um, Did I think a title change was happening looking at the names involved? Um, Oof, I guess not. Because I really didn't, I don't think anybody was going to walk out with that belt <coughs> of the non challenge of, of the non champion participants. Yeah, I definitely felt similar. I thought, you know, if they were really trying to like heat someone up heading into Mania, they could have easily yeah. gone with honestly any of the three men who haven't been U.S. champion in Bronson Reed, Johnny Gargano, or Montez Ford. The I problem is if you if it's Montez or if it's Gargano, then you have a really big first single title win for a guy on a night we all want another single mm. title win for another guy. Yeah, <laughs> and you know how this business works, Jack. It can only be one. Yeah, definitely. But uh, any standout spots for you, sir? Anything that? Oh, this is another real barn burner of a match. Yeah. Ooh, let's see. Um, something that, uh, let's see, Bronson Reed did, I'm sure, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, I know there was a, when Theory first came out, because uh, they started off with Rollins and Gargano. You know, right. the fans were really getting into that. And then Theory comes out, and he goes and locks himself in a pod, only for Seth Rollins to come from the other side and open it up. And then, like they said, like a fist fight in a phone booth, they were just beating down on him in there. That was funny. They, Yeah, it was weird because of how foggy it was getting. It was yeah. Like, covid mm. Uh What else? Uh, we saw, oh, Montez Ford climbing the side of the cage, busting a Lince Dorado. Yeah. Um, all the way from the roof. Jumping on top of everybody. Yeah. Uh, Bronson Reed hit a double Samoan drop on Rollins and Gargano. He did. And walked around the ring like Ryback with the two men on his shoulders. Yeah. Um, Oh, you had uh, Montez Ford trying to hit the people's elbow. Yep. After hitting a very good-looking rock bottom as well. Yeah. And then... uh, uh, I'm trying to see. Oh, yeah. Reed obviously got, you know, the big spot of the night in that. Uh, or, you know, to help him look strong in defeat, they had the whole spot where everyone comes in and does their finish around him to get him out, you know. He was yeah. hit with uh, Gargano's final beat, 
Rollins' yep. stomp, and then Ford finishing him off with the frog splash. Ford also is the one who got the pin on Damian Priest. So he put out, I noted to my dad, he pinned and eliminated two of the biggest men in the match. Yeah. They were but really of course, good Jack, you have to remember the spot of the match. This is the whole reason why this match happens, right? Montez Ford eats a stomp, was it? Yeah. On the, was it like on the cage floor maybe? <clears throat> yeah. And he is shook. The man is on on noodle legs. Can't can't get himself out of the ring, Jack. He needs help. They've got medical assistance pouring into the cage to walk him out of the ring. And you know what that means, Jack? That means that cage door is open. You know what happens in a cage match, Jack? When that cage match door is open. Oh man, I shenanigans. I, yeah, shenanigans, and you know. They set it up at the Rumble with him being the man to eliminate him. Uh-huh. Logan Paul enters the cage and be- and hits a buckshot lariat on Seth Rollins. Ooh, and a stomp to boot. <clears throat> yeah. And that leads to Theory hitting A-Town down and retains his title. Logan Paul. Logan Paul of all people. Jaw jacking the camera saying, I heard you, Seth, quit running your mouth. Oh, man. I hope Seth gets the win at Mania. I hope Seth gets the win at Mania. I think he needs it. You he, know? He definitely Last needs year, it. Cody, year before that, I don't remember what he was doing at WrestleMania. I think he lost the, the like, Owens, you know? Wait, hold on. 38 was Cody. 37 what was he even doing at 37? Oh, he was losing to Cesaro. Remember when oh. we were all excited about Cesaro and his eight-day swing? Yeah, I forgot Before about that, that. in COVID, it was to uh, Kevin Owens. Yeah. So Crazy to think that was like three years ago. Yeah, that is real crazy to think. Oh, and then man. the year before that, he was not made of any WrestleMania because his wife was. The man needs this. Yeah. And speaking of which, since we're going to Hollywood, there was that little segment of uh, Seth Rollins as the Joker and Becky Lynch as Batman. I hated it. it was, I, I, heard, I, I heard it like in the background and I was like, yeah. what the heck is this? And then I look and I'm like, oh my gosh. It was so like, you know, those are good. Those things that they've produced and others will be better. This is what I hated. Like I liked Seth Rollins dancing, you know, it made sense. But they just shoehorn Becky in there because there's no punchline, you know? Yeah. Because they picked a really serious movie to parody. Yeah, apparently, uh, they're going to... I heard rumors that they might be doing one about the bloodline and uh, the Godfather. I saw a clip of it. It was like in a commercial somewhere. Like, yeah, you saw like uh, a, a smash cut of a lot of the rumored ones that are going to happen. Like, so you saw Roman Reigns looking at Paul Haven and the doc- are going, you think I'm funny? Do I look funny to you? <laughs> like he's playing this Joe Pesci guy. Oh, man. Speaking of Roman Reigns, with about 11 minutes, sir, we have our main event. Main event for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. It's Roman Reigns versus Montreal's very own Sami Zayn. Yeah, he has his old theme. He doesn't have his Aww. old look back. I thought if he came out with his old look, it was almost surefire he was winning. You mean like his short hair? Yeah, his like the, pattern? the short hair, maybe the old tights even, you know. Yeah. But uh, going into it, I, I told Ricardo, I'm like, this is the same situation as Drew, and they can't convince me otherwise. He is not winning here, even if it is his hometown. Whoa. As much as I wanted it to happen... I was like, I know it's not going to happen. You know, I was like, I I just don't have faith in this company pulling uh, a shocker like that. You know, and I, I was doing so much of the work myself in my head. You know what I mean? I was like, WrestleMania isn't hurt if Sammy wins. Not at all. WrestleMania is sold. You know what I mean? Like, 
if you run back Sammy Roman with Sammy as a champion and he loses it in the in, in six weeks, we'd all would be okay with that. Even if he lost it to Cody in six weeks. Even if he lost it to Cody. Yeah. Goodness. We've seen transitional reigns like that just to get his sure. pop, you know? So it's yeah. like I was like but I just I guess uh, people can say it's a testament to how long I've been through this that I just didn't have any sort of hope at all. Like, I, yeah. at one point, after a really close two, I found myself sitting up, and then a minute later, I was like, why am I even sitting up? But I already know what's going to happen. Like, that was just to try and draw my interest, but I know it's not going to happen. But I will say, even though to many that sounds as negative as it did, I did not let that hinder the match to me as I still went in looking to enjoy whatever the two produced in ring. And enjoy, I did as well, Jack, including but not limited to the five or so minutes of them standing absolutely still while the audience showered them with cheers for Sammy. Yeah. And we talk about looking strong, you know, in defeat. Going into this match, they... You know, admittedly, I can admit as a fan of Sami Zayn, he hasn't been, you know, anywhere near his peak in the past couple of years, especially playing his heel persona. He's had to very much limit his moveset, you know. So he we going into this, people were like, I don't know, is he going to have that same fire as he did, you know, like a couple of years ago before all the injuries? Well, he went out and showed it. You know, there was so many close spots that they gave him. There was the spot where Roman tried to spear him through the barricade and he moves out last second. Let he sure run does. Through it. And he kicks out of a Superman punch. Yeah. And I think he kicks out of a spear. Yeah. He hits Roman with his own Superman punch and then the Haluva kick. You know, he was, he hit a, a sunset flip on a Roman. He uh, hit a couple of exploders to set up. The uh, Haluva kicks. And I'll tell you, Jack, I know that they got me hook, line, and sinker because at a certain point, my niece and my nephew are watching with my dad. He's setting up for the blue thunder bomb. And I told my family in the room, I said, if he hits this blue thunder bomb, I'm buying everybody breakfast tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. But, and then obviously you had Roman talking smack to uh, Sammy's wife. Yep. Which was the which was a highlight for many people, you know. Uh-huh. You had uh, all these different like fake outs, you know, where it was looking like Sammy was just getting the beat down, only for him to come back at the last second, and all of that. And then, to me, the match took a dive, only because of, uh, I guess you could say my annoyance with the way they booked the final bit of it all. Yeah. So we get our first ref bump, which admittedly was pretty weak to me. The Mm -hmm. first ref bump was pretty weak. Yeah. Hard to believe he's going to be knocked out for that long by that. Yeah. And at that point, you know, I was like, all right, if I already knew already that he was losing, this is the definite part because here's going to come out the Usos. And my annoyance was with the fact that people kept saying that Jey Uso was going (laughs) to show up and turn on Sammy. And my annoyance with that is that it just doesn't make sense. And yeah. with the whole arc that Jay's been going through, there's much more interesting ways to like set something up rather than just him falling back in line with Roman. Yeah. But instead, Jimmy's the first one to come out. He throws all those super kicks and all that. Uh, what else happened? Uh well, he hit him with a splash, and he still kicked out. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And the new ref came in, too. Uh, Jimmy gets hit with a haluva hey, kick. A new ref comes it. in, and he's seen all that that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I was telling. And then another thing I told my dad, I'm like, hey, what happens if the second ref wakes up while the – or the first ref wakes up while the second ref is still in there? Who gets overall jurisdiction at that point? But uh, that's when the spear happens and Zane kicks out at like 2.99. Yeah. And it's crazy. And then again, the part that I know you the most, we get a second ref bump of the night. He's a better looking one, a Superman punch to the face. Yeah. 
Paul Heyman gets out the chair, but then we see there's Jey Uso now. He's there he the is. And it looks like, and like, that was the hopeful part to me was all oh, like, but at the same time, I was like, oh, he's playing it up. He's going to act like he's angry with Roman and then he's going to super kick Zane. But instead, we get this sort of face off and then Reigns moves out the way and Zane hits a spear on Jay. And yep. then Reigns uses the chair several times before hitting the spears. The One of the previous refs comes in and counts the three. And that place, you could hear a pin drop in there. It died a hard death. It was so incredible, Jack. It was Undertaker streak ending dead in that room. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You almost think it was the wrong move to make him lose. Yeah. I I was just like I was like ah, uh, you know, I would have much rather preferred Zayn lose clean, uh-huh. solely because it gives the fans a definitive end. You know how much time we got, Jack? Four minutes. Here's why I'm not bothered by the end of the match because it's not the end of the show. Kevin Owens, Montreal's very own, comes out in a triumphant, you know, return from Royal Rumble to beat up folk, to save Sammy, because it looks like a beatdown was waiting for him after the match. And, uh, and golly, Jack, you know, you had your wonderings about if Jay was going to backstab Sammy's aim after all this, and it wouldn't make any storyline sense. You know what would make storyline sense? Were you terrified, Jack, of Kevin Owens <laughs> beating the heck out of Sammy Zayn in front of Montreal? Oh, that didn't even come to my mind. I was like, don't do it, Kevin. Don't do what naturally comes to you and what can definitely make storyline sense. Just like, you know, jealousy. But he just, he moves aside, Jack, in a very symbolic way so that Sammy hits the last hit, a move of the night, the halluva kick on Roman Reigns. And I think, Jack, the fact that he gets that last shot at Roman means that he ain't done with Roman and we ain't done with Sammy. Let's go, WrestleMania. Woo! It is two nights. That's all I'm saying. It's two nights. It writes and, sir, itself. Sir, I, all these people keep coming up with their different like explanations. But to me, the tag titles are not the finish here. They no, sir. Because that would require to like beat Jay, who's like in this very different headspace, and you know what I mean, in character space. Yeah. Oh, it's gotta be. Even if, even if, even if, Jay, even if uh, Sammy and Kevin like cost Roman the match against Cody, right? I'm okay with that. You know, just like one last, one last stick it to Roman in this island of relevancy. If they just came in and helped Cody win, because Cody ain't got nobody. Yeah, definitely. Because he, he doesn't even have two packs. Because <laughs> to me, it uh, that's what I'm hoping for too. Is they gotta continue with Sammy? They gotta see that they have something here for potentially two men when facing Roman, or even like how you said, just them helping out in dethroning Roman, you know, just something that involves Sammy with Roman, you know, because if not, if nothing happens and if they go this whole tag title route, which I told my dad is so annoying because KO and him are just going to break up like after a couple of months, (laughs) you know, (laughs) yeah, this is going to look very similar to what happened with Drew in, in, uh, well, at the Clash of the Castle where they give him this like feel good moment at the end of the night, but it's like, that's not what we want. We want to see him involved, no, you know. No, I didn't. I didn't want to see. Uh, I didn't want to see Drew McIntyre sing uh, Oasis. <laughs> no, that's not what I paid for. That's not what I dreamt of. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, as uh, we're coming up on the final minute, thank you all for joining for this episode of season three of the Rule Thirty Four podcast. I've been Jack, joined by my fellow guests, Mister Solis. We will see you all in six weeks to cover WrestleMania. And as always, if it exists, we have an opinion on it. Thank you, and we'll catch you on the next episode.